We know computers since about 20 years in, 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 in business and society, and they change pretty everything. So there is no big thing, but it's everything they changed. If I look at the consumer perspective, then of course uh, consumers or people like you and me see computers more clearly since about 10 years when we first had the internet, the world wide web, but now I think most important the mobile phone. So when a computer comes into your pocket, when you can use it like the telephone before, you just start it, you just go to Wikipedia, whatever. So it becomes even part of our normal daily life and that makes us think that was the biggest change. But it started all uh, already 20 years ago. It started changing businesses and how we do business, how we do trade, all that things. And one of the most important messages, I guess, is uh, that we're only at the very beginning uh, of, of, of computerizing this society, this industry. So there is many, many generations to follow where we see many, many new things. Just having more information is certainly not benefiting us. I just refer to TV, right? You have, uh, I think, about 1,000 channels and uh, maybe 999 channels. Probably currently right now, they just air some trash. So it's lots of information, uh, but it's totally useless. Uh, the question is more like what the receiver would do with the stuff. What would the receiver ignore? What would he use? Most of, many times you have tons of information, but not the relevant ones. And one of the new things is, of course, trying to filter out what's really very important for you. Uh, we are very much influenced by our environment. Uh, in my younger years, I used to think, well, I just, I just need a room and sit there and, and, and I do my own stuff. And I'm not influenceable by anything of my surrounding, but it's totally wrong. We're influenced by architecture, we're influenced by our people around, we're influenced by uh, the accessibility of information. Uh, so we will change very much the way we are doing. But don't ask me how we will change. Uh, one of the most important trends uh, we see these days is the miniaturization of hardware. So computers get smaller and smaller, become part of everyday objects, which also means you know, they get more cheap, cheaper, more inexpensive, which also means they use less energy. At the same time, you also need different software. On, you know, if you have a little, little tiny chip that might be part of every banknote, eh? you need other types of software running on that chip, or other types of software running in your cats or in your arm. You know, yeah. uh, now, um, so there will be new hardware, new software. However, on the software part, uh, we don't have this large history on industrialization, such we had on hardware. So there will be more innovation on the software part, uh, how to really produce software, how to make it stable, how to make it reusable, and so forth. Uh, Apple, for instance, has this very clear idea that you cannot separate hardware from software, you have to do it in sync, because you never can, that's what Jim Jobs said, and I like it a lot, you never can build great software without building uh, the hardware. Uh, with Microsoft, that's different. They really say, well, I don't care too much about that hardware stuff, um, I would like to build, let's say, the entire ecosystems everybody needs. And then that comes from the Windows world, and, and, and they have been tremendously successful. Google is coming the other way. They say, okay, well, we are the new world. We come from kind of the cloud. We come from web services. We don't install software. And we, we are kind of the web company that is able to search everything, to present information. So they're coming from different directions. And everybody, all of these companies, they have the their, their truth, the true path, and, and they will kind of uh, try to be successful following their history also. So what is the duty of a, of a university? Um, and it's a noble duty, I guess. Uh, we are paid by society, and so I think our job is it really to use the knowledge we acquire in research. First, we have to acquire knowledge in research, not just replicate something, but to acquire fresh knowledge in research. And then to use that to make our small and medium companies in Switzerland successful. Uh, to make sure that we have in future many, many workplaces. And uh, that's not just in R&D, but that's also in production. So, and then, and then that's what we are doing actually, uh, especially here at the Institute of Technology Management, happily working together with industry, making very applicable 
research and also spinning off own companies, of course.